Good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us, of course. Well, yes. And on today's episode, we will be uh, talking about some things that we've discussed in the past. Uh, there's been some news that has come out about the NCAA, as well as U.S. men's soccer. Uh, we'll also be talking about Disneyland reopening, some news that has come out about that. And, uh, of course, the topic that everyone wants to hear about that's near and dear to us, part two of A History of Us. Yes. So, remember, this show is 100% interactive, so your comments and questions are greatly appreciated. Absolutely. You know, we're broadcasting live right now. And so, you know, please take the opportunity. We've got that comment box available there for you to put in your thoughts, your comments, you know, yell at us, scream at us, whatever you want to say. And if you're listening to this after the fact, you know, if you're listening to this via our podcast, uh, you know, you can still send us messages, you know, through Anchor, or you can send us messages through our Facebook page or however the heck you want. But ultimately, tell us what you're thinking. Yeah. I mean, we can possibly use them in a, uh, later episodes or whatnot. You know, of course, as long as they're interesting to us. Yes, that's that's the important piece. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, I want to make sure that anybody that is watching live right now, that they understand that if they miss any part of this conversation, they're welcome to go back and listen to the podcast. It's typically up within about an hour of the show ending. Uh, I do my best. Uh, and we are on all of those major platforms now. You know, Anchor, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, Breaker, Google, Radio Public. Uh, yeah, we're... We're everywhere that I think we can be. I, I, I've, I've gotten us everywhere, I think. So, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, I, I wanted to start off with, uh, I heard some good news. Uh, you're, you're down in the Vegas area. Uh, yes, which, sir. Which is Clark County. Um, and I heard that the kids are back in school as of today. Is that, is that right? Apparently, that is the truth. And... The reason that I heard about this is because you told me, and and, yeah. <laughs> and, and so uh, I do find it interesting, the story that you shared with me on how you found out about this. So please, you know, if you wouldn't mind telling the audience. Oh, no. So basically, uh, I think it was last Saturday, I was in a store working, and one of the guys came up to me, and he was like, you got kids? And I was like, no. Nah. He's like, well, they're going back to school. And I was like, oh, really? When is this supposed to be? He was like, next Tuesday. So I was like, oh, okay, dope. And so I kind of just forgot about it until yesterday. And uh, so I was working and I asked a woman who had her daughter and I was just like, I was just asking her if her daughter was going back to school. And she was like, yes, they open up to, they go back to school tomorrow. And she was hold, very excited about that. Hold on, hold on. So the first person that you talked to about this was, is a co-worker of sorts they work at one of the stores you work in yeah he was just an he's an associate at walmart uh one of the but somebody that, that you that was at. but somebody that you've engaged with before right no i'm like i never talked with this dude before he just kind of oh. dropped yeah he just dropped that on me that's, that's i was kinda like weird. oh okay that's kind of weird and then the woman uh that that you spoke with yesterday uh, with her daughter does she somebody that we work with or nah it was just a it was just a customer i was just interested to find out if that was true so uh, wait wait, wait. Yeah. so you're you're in a in a store doing your job you know stocking mm -hmm. shelves or whatever right and a random woman walking by with a child you you decided to accost her and say hey uh <laughs> is, is your kid <laughs> there was no accosting going on well i was i was i i look i kept my social distance away i was <laughs> no no I no I, i'm trying to understand show. so so I, I assume countless people walk by you when you're stocking these shelves. A and so you waited until a woman was walking by with a little girl and chose that to be the opportune time to say, Hey, I hear your kids are going back to school. Is that right? Like well, you make it sound, you make it sound like that. No, it didn't sound like that at all. Like, Oh, Hey, Hey, is your kid going back to school? No, it was just like, Hey, I was wondering if, uh, is she going to be going back to It's like, I hear schools are open up tomorrow. Is she going to be going back? And she was, and she just answered. She was the first woman that she was actually the first person with a kid that walked by when I was, when I was thinking about it. So I was like, Oh, you know what? I'll just ask them and you know we're supposed to involve supposed to work in customer service so that's what i was doing i was i was uh asking questions to help the customer yeah let's go with that but no like i was she was the first person that had it had a kid 
uh, that was walking by. So I asked, I asked her if, uh, I just asked her if she, her daughter was going to be going back to school, uh, tomorrow, today. Um, so this was yesterday. So, uh, on Tuesday and she was like, yes, she will be going back to school. And I am very excited about that. That's, that was her words to me. Okay. Okay. Um, so obviously kids are going back to school because the COVID situation here in Nevada is improving, um, you know, due to, you know, the shot being pretty, the vaccine being pretty ready, readily available, you know, quick update. I did get my second dose of Moderna last Tuesday. So it's been a week. Um, I will tell you, well, so, so we were, we, we broadcasted last week about three hours or so after I had received the, the, the vaccine. And I already at that point had a little bit of a headache and otherwise not too bad. Uh, it got worse. Um, I, I pretty much was out of work the next two days. Uh, a lot of that time laid up in bed. Um, just a lot of joint pain, uh, muscle pain, just it was it was not pleasant. It was not as bad as I've heard so, uh, from some other people's experiences, but it was it was not fun. Uh, no, I didn't I, I didn't have I any nausea I, or. <laughs> I called you a couple hours after after the fact because like you called me a couple hours after uh, after I got my shot a couple weeks back, and so I was like, I'm gonna return the favor, and yeah, you <laughs> you sounded you sounded pretty pathetic, my friend. Yeah, yeah, it was not fun. But <laughs> here we are a week later, and I'm back to normal, uh, yes, I sir. guess, as normal as I can be. And uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, in, in another week, I will be at that two-week uh, window where I will be at the highest efficacy as I can be, theoretically, 95%. Um, you know, uh, I'm hoping – so one of the things I wanted to talk about with you is – is something that's been recently uh, floated around in different states or different areas. And that's the concept of a COVID travel passport. Um, and, and what this would be is in essence, you would carry your shot cards around or, or something of the such to uh, be able to travel out of state into a different state. Uh, it might be required for airline travel. It may be required by theme parks. Uh, I have seen numerous cruise lines where it is going to be required for you to go on a cruise. Um, and so I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. Uh, you know what? I, I don't really have a problem with it. Um, if if you've gotten your vaccine, um, you know, and you're you're uh, you're out of that window, you know, you've you've gone the two weeks, so you're you're good to go. Uh, I don't I don't really see the problem in in you know in carrying something that identifies that you're fully vaccinated. And so it's interesting uh, in. <laughs> You know, I don't ever want this show to go too political, but, right. you know, I think it is interesting to call out that there there is a certain section of, of people in politics that seem to be against this conceptually. Um, but yet these are the same people that also seem to be in support of, you know, like voter IDs. And so it, it's interesting. <laughs> it's It's a little... I don't understand how you can support one thing, but not the other. So you want me to show an ID to vote? but you don't want me to carry some sort of identification to say that, yes, I've been vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would think voting would be more serious as far as like, you know, travel. Yeah. That's serious because you want to, you're, you're going to other places. And so they, you know, I think that's smart just from the fact that it shows cool. You don't actually have to go to someplace and then, you know, like quarantine, you know, why, like, for two weeks or however long they have you quarantined when you get there. I think that's a, a good idea. And I mean, I also think, you know, Hey, if we got to show some sort of ID to go, you know, to, I mean, actually, I think I, I mean, I guess our IDs are kind of tied to when we go to the DMV. So, I mean, to get to register to vote anyways. So, you know, whatever. Well, and you know, the one thing that I, bothers me is California right now. Um, they're still one of the strongest, 
uh, states with a lot of their restrictions. And as as anybody who enjoys our show knows, uh, I'm I am we are huge Disney fans, and Disneyland is reopening on the thirtieth uh, of of this month, April. And uh, I I want to go. I, you know, I would be there on on the thirtieth if if I could. But California is not allowing out of staters. And I hope that they might look at this COVID passport as as the potential to say, hey, you know what? We do have this rule for out-of-staters, but if you're fully vaccinated and you have that proof, why not? You know what I mean? It it just makes sense to me. Yeah. Why turn turn away business? Exactly. I mean, we, we've, we've discussed this and, and the thing is we've, we've talked about, you know, um, when they decided to open up and we found out it was for only out of staters, it was like, wait, like, but we're back. You know, by that time we'll be, we're, I've been out of the two week window. You're working on your second week out of in, into that window. So, I mean, like at that point, it's like, yeah, we'd be, we, if, if like we can show some sort of proof, that we are vaccinated, I don't see why they wouldn't allow for for people from out of the area to come to the park. So speaking of Disneyland reopening, and you know, one of the reasons, even more so now, that I really want to get in there um, is when the Blue Bayou reopens, they will be reopening with alcohol service. It will be a limited selection of beer and wine and a signature cocktail the hurricane oh oh wait hey look look if they can give me the hurricane like i had at this place called uh rue at santana row it's no longer there but uh they basically dropped this little bead of of dry ice in the hurricane and so like it was fogging it fogs up and has a little Mm -hmm. swirl deal going Mm -hmm. on and while you drink oh man that was crazy it was it was mad delicious but like that'd be kind of good if they could do something like that I would expect to see them do something like that. I mean, so this is not going to be Disney's first soiree into doing alcohol at Disneyland itself. Uh, Recently, when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened, uh, they opened the cantina and uh, started doing alcoholic beverages in there. And, you know, it sounds like they're going to have some of the same rules that they have uh, elsewhere, which is a, a maximum drink limit. Right. Now, is this also now? Um, I, I know at California Adventure that was like one of the first places to have it, at least in in Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I can't remember if we actually drank there when we went because I, is it only in a designated area that you can drink it, or is can you walk around with it? No, you can absolutely walk around uh, the park with them. Okay. Uh, now, I don't. It does not sound like that will be the case at when the parks reopen here on the 30th, uh, all food and drink will have, oh, to, be has to be yeah, in the restaurant um, or in that immediate vicinity. You can't just walk around the park with a churro, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but I get it because if you're eating, you don't have your mask on. So right. they want to try and keep those mask removals in a confined space. And I, I think that makes sense. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, uh, I'm excited. Uh, I love Blue Bayou. They have fantastic food. It is expensive, um, but the atmosphere <laughs> is amazing. Have you ever eaten in the Blue Bayou, James? I have never eaten at Blue Bayou, but I've waved at people eating in the Blue Bayou when I'm on Pirates. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and that is one of the, the beauties of that restaurant is it's set right there within uh, the, the beginning of the ride of, of Pirates of the Caribbean. And, um, you know, I like to specifically request a table right along the railing uh, to watch the people going by on the boats and it, it's peaceful. It's relaxing. It, like I said, it is expensive. Uh, I pulled up the dinner menu for an example, for a couple of examples and um, you know, something that I like uh, very much so, which is only on their lunch menu, unfortunately is the Monte Cristo. Um, and that is it, their description is Turkey, ham, Swiss, lightly fried, fruit skewer powdered sugar so it's a monte cristo sandwich how much do you think it costs uh that's probably what probably like 20 bucks you're close you're close 29 <laughs> oh wow yes i mean it i mean it, it's a but it's a big sandwich so i mean it's not like it's a little sandwich right 
that's true. It's not it's not uh, very small, but twenty nine dollars. That's. I mean, how much do we? How much? How much do you normally pay for a Monte Cristo? Uh, so there's a restaurant up here at the Atlantis Casino that uh, I frequent uh, called Purple Parrot Cafe, and they do a Monte Cristo and. 16 18 bucks maybe yeah um and that that comes with fries and it comes with you know the powdered sugar comes with jam comes with all that kind of stuff um so (laughs) disney prices so so going along with that right so looking at the dinner menu Mm -hmm. so you know uh, for me right away the thing that stands out is the surf and turf so i'll (laughs) So <laughs> I look I, I'm gonna put that I, I okay. So I'm you wanna hear what it that, is? Oh yeah, tell me what it is and I'll, okay. I'll split lobster tail. So I assume okay. it's one lobster tail that's been cut down the middle, right? Right. Uh petite filet mignon. Petite. Usually that means like a four ouncer. Uh au, au gratin potatoes. Okay. Chef's choice vegetables, so probably whatever they have on hand, with a <laughs> with a cabernet <laughs> sauce. Okay. And that's, How much the you vegetable, that's the vegetables or the, what is that? What's the Cabernet sauce just on the side? It usually goes over the steak. steak. Okay. Um, okay. So all that, I'm going to put that at about 60 bucks. Hey, so you're, you're close again the other way though. $52. Oh, okay. So here's something that's in line with, with, I think you would really like the jambalaya. Oh yes. Oh yes. I love jambalaya. So Especially it's, if it's spicy. So it's shrimp and dewy yeah. sausage, yes, chicken sir. sausage, oh, Creole rice, okay. and spiced Creole sauce. Okay, okay. And, and I have seen this plated. It it does feel like it's a good portion. How much do you think? Um, that's probably going for about. I'd say that's going to be around thirty dollars. Again, you're you're close. Thirty six. Okay. So, you know, it's not cheap. Uh, so I can only imagine the drinks when, when those are available, beer, wine, and the hurricane. Um, <laughs> that hurricane is probably going to be around, that's probably going to be close to 20 bucks. That better come in a souvenir glass. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll see. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know Disney prices as far as drinks go. They're, they're, they're not cheap. That's right. So the important thing to remember is there is a max of two drinks per adult. Yeah. So. so Disney's trying to keep it real, you know, let yeah. you have, have a little libation, but uh, they don't want you getting crazy. They, they, no. And that's, that's absolutely understandable. That is, a, it is a family park after all. And so like, and especially, I mean, hell with a hurricane, I mean, that's, that's a bunch of alcohol in one drink. So, I mean, hey. it's a lot of blue curacao though. Yeah, that's true too. But I mean, if you can knock, if you can knock two of those out and, and actually they'll probably be very strict on, um, uh, uh, like especially like a mixed drink like that they're probably super strict on portions oh uh, i'm sure on pours and stuff like that so but uh but no but i'm uh, it, it'll be i think two is two is a reasonable amount yeah i mean if you're and hell, at those prices head- at those prices i mean two is gonna be way more than enough <laughs> yeah and if you're going in there for dinner or lunch even uh, you know, you're talking about probably at, at most an hour, hour 15. Do you really yeah. need more than two hurricanes? No. 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 So, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for that. Uh, I really want to get to Disneyland. I really want them to let my butt in. So if yeah. you're listening, Disneyland, make it happen. Um, so <laughs> following up on our last episode, we talked a little bit about uh, United States soccer. And I wanted to make sure that we announced that uh, the men's soccer team did not qualify for the Olympics. Um, third year in a row. Third and, time no, no, in a row. Yes, not third year, third time. Sorry, third time in a row. Like, yes, so on. 12 years. Yes. <sighs> um, so I, I was watching Saturday, Saturday Night Live, and they, they did make a joke about the U.S. men's team losing uh, <laughs> and not qualifying. And uh, I believe it was Michael Che who said uh, – you know, don't feel too bad because you're still making more than the women. So, um, <laughs> thank but you, in SNL. Our last discussion, in our last discussion, we did find out that the women do get some pretty good perks. So that's why. Yes, for know. the for the specifically the the U.S. team soccer, that's true. Yeah. Um, 
So also something that came out this last week, there is a case uh, that went before the United States Supreme Court involving the NCAA. And I'll, I'll let you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that was so the article that I read was written on the 30th. And so they said Wednesday. So I'm assuming that was last Wednesday that it went to the Supreme Court. Now, we're we will not hear anything about this case, they said, until probably uh, May or June. Um, so we, right now it's just going to be all speculation, but, um, the article was very interesting, uh, was very interesting to read. Uh, basically this, this whole thing kind of stems from a, stems from a case that hap- uh, that was brought to court, uh, in 2014. So, <laughs> uh, so it's, it's been in the works for a while. Um, the NCAA, uh, because of the ruling of the judge, took it to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court decided to hear this one out. Um, so basically, kind of what this whole thing is about, it's an uh, antitrust lawsuit. Uh, basically, the NCAA is saying that they want to be able to, con- to be, control, be in control of their own rules, whereas um, this student that actually brought this uh, lawsuit uh, from University of Iowa, I want to say, I don't quote me on that. Um, basically, what he is saying is, is that you're making money off of our likeness, we should have some sort of comp- compensation for such. Um, I did, I also, um, this was an ESPN article that I read. I also watched the interview that they, they did with a couple of students that are really uh, kind of pushing this whole thing. Um, I found it interesting. I found it interesting that um, one of the guys uh, who is an who plays uh, for one of the teams that was in the tournament. He has he's an artist, and that's what he does in his free time. He wanted to start an Instagram page for his art, but because of current NCAA rules, he is not allowed to. Uh, whereas uh, another another gentleman wanted to do a basketball camp in his hometown based on NCAA rules, he also cannot. So Hold on. So is it that they can't have an Instagram page or start a camp, uh, or is it that they can't make money – Via that's these. yeah. So I so I would assume I would I'm going to assume that it's because of the potential to make money off of these things, and so the thing with the NCAA is that they're trying to say we are preserving amateurism in the sports that you know they cover a a ton of sports, so they're trying to keep the amateurism of those sports, but. Uh, Opponents to that are saying, but you treat everything else very professional. You know, you, you're, you treat it as a business, which in part it is. But at the same time, how can you be professional and still keep, you know, and then try and say, we're keeping the amateurism of the sport? Yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah, I, I find that to be very interesting myself. It's, you can't really say, no, you can't go make money, but we're going to make a lot of money off of you. Um, Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that, uh, I, there are a number of states that, um, are going to be having cases, uh, pretty soon. Um, I heard like July could be the start starting of the first of some of these, um, which uh, they refer to them as um, what was it? I image. So it was image uh, likeness, and I forgot the other one. But um, but basically, they they're they're going to be these cases coming up very soon in multiple states that that involve this. Let me just get the proper acronym for you. It's in here somewhere. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But like I said, it's just one of those things where th- this the first ruling that the NCAA got from the Supreme Court, because they've been there before, um, was back in the 80s. So 
I mean, this, these are some 30 year old rulings and a lot's changed. Um, I, I mean, I think, I don't even remember college sport. I mean, I, I was early eighties. And so I was a child through most of it. Um, but I remember, you know, college sports, but I don't really remember them being huge on TV and things like that. I remember, um, I think like the, one of my first kind of big images and that was even after the fact was from that Stanford game where the band came out on the field mm-hmm. <laughs> and, the, and you know, the guys running the, running the ball back for, for a score. So um, I, that was one of the, like the first big things that I ever remember on TV. So, um, so, I mean, I think over the years, especially with the PAC 12 network, you got the big 12, ne- uh, big 12 network, you got, uh, the SEC network, you know, and the, plus they're getting ESPN uh, game days and uh, and stuff like that, and as well as as well as uh, the college football networks, all that stuff. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of money, and I mean, Mark, you made actually a, a good suggestion. When we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Yeah, to me, uh, you know, I think why doesn't the NCAA say okay, every single athlete that is receiving a scholarship is going to receive a base pay. Um, and, and in order to receive this base pay, you're going to sign a contract that allows us to use your likeness. Um, and, and it's, let's say a low nominal amount, like $10,000 per player or, or per year or something, something low, but these players can then go out and, uh, get sponsorships. So, you know, everyone is getting something, so it's equal, but the players that are, you know, excelling, those are the ones that are going to get the sponsorships and make some serious cash. Um, you know, and then turn around and say, if you take a sponsorship, <clears throat> if you take a sponsorship, you cannot uh, reference, you know, your school that you attend. You know, I, I think, I think it makes sense to do something like that. You know, let these people make some money, especially if the NCAA is going to make some money on the backs of these people, you yeah. know, EA Sports is is talking about coming out with a new NCAA football game, hopefully by next year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen one since I believe 2014. And the reason for that is because of, I believe, probably this lawsuit. And, and so, you know, if if these players are going to be put into a video game and the NCAA is going to be allowed to make money off of that, those players should get something for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so anyways, I think, uh, oh, we're, oh, we should probably, what's, we're, what else were we covering with this? That, that was about it. So I, I do definitely want you to keep an eye on it. Cause I'd love to find out what the Supreme court ruling is, uh, in a couple months when that does come out and we'll come back to it. Oh, but, absolutely. But right now <laughs> I, I do want to shamelessly, uh, plug, uh, my show that I am, I am on uh, the radio show, the secrets of heritage house that I'm participating in doing some voiceover work. Um, it does premiere on Sunday, April 25th uh, at 9 PM Pacific daylight time on KNVC 95.1 FM directly after pop culture kaboom uh, with a repeat broadcast on Friday, the 30th at 8 PM Pacific daylight time. Uh, it will then be available via all your favorite podcast platforms on Saturday, May 1st. Uh, so if you're interested in secrets of heritage house, it is already out there. Season one is done in the can. You can listen to it on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Um, James, I know that you've started listening to it yourself. So, uh, hopefully, you know, in a a week or two, you'll, uh, finished the series and you can give a brief summation on what you thought of the show without giving away any of the secrets. (laughs) Um, Uh, heritage house. (laughs) Yes. No secrets. Do not give away the secrets. Um, but, uh, yeah, so starting on May 1st, if you're not, uh, a Northern Nevada resident starting on May 1st, you can definitely, uh, start catching the show via podcast services. And, uh, yeah, I, I have been involved in every episode so far this season. I, I am going to be recording for the next episode I am in tomorrow night. Uh, nice. very short scene. I think I have a, a total of five lines, but, uh, with your boy, <laughs> but you know, I'll take what I can get. Bigger yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so also I wanted to, uh, make sure to bring up, uh, that in an upcoming episode, hopefully next week, assuming schedules work, uh, we will be interviewing a, uh, member of the creative team, uh, specifically the supervising orchestrator from, 
uh, Disney Plus's TV show Encore. And uh, just just putting this out there, this this guy, uh, he's got some serious chops. Uh, he, he's been involved with major Broadway productions, including Disney's Tarzan and Rock of Ages. So uh, obviously, you know, just saying that he's worked on Disney Plus's Encore might not sound that impressive to some. Um, <laughs> But this guy's worked on Broadway. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be interviewing him hopefully next week if schedules work out. Um, but uh, I will hopefully know by this weekend for certain, and I'll make sure to uh, post that once we lock in that date. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got any shameless plugs? No, nope, not for me. No? Okay. Well, then oh, actually, I- you know what? I will say, I will say, if you go into a store, uh you know we're all doing shopping and stuff like that <clears throat> just you know maybe throw out a little thank you to the uh to to if you're walking by an employee or something just say hey you know what thanks thanks for what you're doing out here it, you know it might not seem like a big deal but you know it kind of it's a it's a day brightener how many times do you do that in the average day oh i don't have to do it because people actually come up to me and do it but i like i talk to the guys that work there and i'm like hey man we're all out here, you know, so we, you know, you guys are doing good work out here. So, you know, hold on. I, I just want to make sure you understood what you just said. You're asking people to do this. And I said, how often do you do it? And you said, I don't have to do it. Do no, I don't mean like, do you not go no, out to stores. I, and- like when I no, when I'm, when I'm in the store, like <laughs> I'm, I'm just working. I don't really go uh, on my days off. I don't really go into stores, but if I did, yeah, I'd say thank you to the guys. I mean, I say thank you to the guys that are working. When do you do your grocery shopping? I do it like after the store is closed on my way home, like on my way out of the store. Like when I'm done my last store of the day, I like, I'll grab a, whatever, like a couple things that I need and then I'll, I'll head home. So I do it like after the store is closed. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Well, before we move into the subject that's near and dear to our hearts, I think it's time for a very quick dance break. And we're back. <laughs> so if, you, if you're listening chronologically, then you know that on our last episode, we, we did a uh, brief history of us, uh, part one, where we, we kind of talked. Last time. Through, yeah. Last time on Fat and Black. Um, you know, we, we both kind of talked about our lives up until about high school um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, how we got to where we were. And... Uh, you know, ultimately how we met in, in there, there was a hallway in the theater complex where uh, we were both heavily involved and in. uh, we hung out in there and uh, played nerdy RPG games with other people. And um, ultimately lunch and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ate lunch. Uh, we, we were in multiple shows together in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things that we didn't talk about, uh, specifically around high school time was something called the Ohlone College Theater Festival. Oh, and yeah. and I wanted to talk about that because I think for you, especially uh, later in life, that became a, a much larger thing for you than me. Yeah. Um, but ultimately what it was is it was a, um, it was a theater festival that was more or less think of the Olympics for theater. Yeah. Um, it was, a, it was, a, it was a competition yeah, for it, sure. It, it was for high schools all around the Bay Area, uh, all around even California. Actually, yeah, because we had uh, we even had some schools come from like Eureka, and mm-hmm. then um, in later years we actually had a school from LA come up. Yeah, so, so yeah, it, you know there there were many different categories. You had classical monologues, drama and comedy, contemporary monologues, drama and comedy. You had scenes, musicals. Th- uh, you know, tech Olympics where, you know, the, the, the tech guys and gals would go out and hang lights or build a set or whatever the case may be. Um, all t- so all you- timed, <laughs> yeah, all yeah. timed events and stuff like that. No, it was, it was absolute. it's, it's madness. It, it was absolute madness. So in high school, uh, what did you do? You know? Um, so my first year, uh, the first year I was a room monitor. So each school is, uh, required, uh, to send a, a certain number of monitors to basically help out. Um, so uh, my first year, I decided, you know, yeah, I'll be a monitor. That's cool. And so um, basically, I helped out with that. Um, the following year, I did uh, a monologue 
uh, classical, uh, classical humorous monologue. And I did a contemporary uh, dramatic scene. And now, so from, from that year, do you remember any of the dialogue? Like, you know, for your, for your monologue, do you remember no. it at all? No. No. Um, do you remember what it was? <laughs> um, I believe it was, uh, it was a monologue from Midsummer's Night's Dream, I believe. Uh, I, I was, I will tell you, I was nervous as heck. Uh, it, was, it was not good. Not good at all. Plus, so, also, it was one of those things where I didn't, um, it wasn't until like I took a, I, I later went to Ohlone and I took a class. I didn't really understand the language of it. It's, mm-hmm. and you know, Shakespeare, it was based, I mean, yeah, it was English, but it, we always say it was written in a foreign language just because there's, there's things you have to understand. There's nuance to it. There's actually, a, you know, there's a rhythm to it. It's very poetic when, uh, but you know, at the time I needed kind of a quick monologue and, um, yeah, I just didn't really understand it and as well as I should have, which and plus I was running from one uh running from one building all the way across campus to another building to do this monologue and I just was it was not not ready not to do it. So something for the audience to know uh, when it comes to this uh, theater festival this contest uh you you had to perform whatever it was you were doing twice uh so it was a two day contest um so on day 1 you would perform uh in front of a set of judges and then on day 2 you would perform in front of a different set of judges and depending on how you you were scored if if you scored extremely highly you would go to the finals where you would now perform it a third time in front of a set of judges and then you know you'd find out if you placed um and during the award ceremony yeah yeah so it was uh you know the first day was primarily uh an afternoon the second day was primarily a morning and then if you made it to the finals those were in the afternoon and so yeah. it, it and you're doing two things you know i I don't know about all schools, but I know at our high school, if you were going to compete, you were required to uh, participate in two events because that was the maximum you were allowed to participate in. And the school was paying for you to participate. So they wanted to make sure they were getting their money's worth, which I think is fair. <laughs> um, so, well, okay, so you need was, to also make it clear though. There, um, there's certain things that you can only compete. Like uh, there was a couple things like, wasn't it like maxi musical? You could only do one thing or was that still two? I couldn't remember. So when we were in high school, there was only one musical category. They changed that later to be a two mini and maxi. Yes. So a small group and a large group. Right. But I couldn't remember if you're doing, did you also do, if you're doing maxi musical, well, actually that's all it was. If you're doing the musical, did you also compete in something else? I yes. So the only thing where you would only be participating in one was if you were either doing improv or if you were doing tech Olympics, those two categories, those were the only things you could do. Well, I mean, Any- tech, tech Olympics is an all day thing anyway. So that's all you could do. But, mm-hmm. uh, and then improv. Oh yeah. I guess cause improv there's, there's set times for that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so that was, was that your sophomore year, your junior year? Uh, that was my junior year. So what yeah, did you do your... Well, because I know that was... Because, uh, freshmen could... For, it wasn't for... It was only for... I thought... Was it for sophomores, juniors, and seniors? I don't know. I know that my sophomore year, I was in Rent. So we did a musical uh, piece, and I was in Rent for that. I don't remember the other thing I did that year. Cause I know, um, I know it was like, I, I remember my junior year was when I actually did the, um, when I did the monitoring, my senior year, I did the scene, scenes and monologue, uh, scene okay. and monologue. So the reason that I bring this up and we'll get to it in a little while is, is James was heavily involved with the theater festival for years to come and, and we'll get into that. <laughs> um, but, uh, 
One of the other things during our high school time that I wanted to call out was that I was uh, heavily involved in a local cable access television show. And it was very similar to the concept of what we do here now, where it was a live call-in show. Uh, we went up every other Thursday for an hour and a half. And, you know, we would do different topics, such as basically what we do now. And, you know, when I first started on the show, it was called Video Newark. Uh, it was produced by a gentleman named Roddy Lopez, who I think he's still somewhere out there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen him in a long time, but I hear he's still somewhere out there. Um, and uh, he was a great guy. Uh, you know, he, he really taught me about, you know, that entry level television experience. Um, you know, I, I started behind the scenes working on cameras, working on uh, soundboard, working on taking the calls that were coming in. And I eventually moved into a co-host slot uh, where I was on camera and, and, you know, it started off as segments where I'd come on for 15, 20 minutes and uh, of the hour and a half. And then eventually I moved into more or less the, the host role and started producing and uh, developing content for the, for the show. And, you know, it was a ton of fun as a high schooler, especially uh, in, in a small town to be a part of something like that. Um, it was awesome. And, uh, you know, I brought in a lot of my friends to, to come work on the show or participate on the show to be interviewed. Uh, you know, did, did some episodes with you, James, as well, um, to ultimately, unfortunately, lose the show uh, due to more or less <laughs> politics. So, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Small town politics, baby. Yeah, I, uh, so I graduated from high school and I was asked to come back to announce football games at, at the stadium and on the PA. And, you know, the person that had been calling the games prior, you know, he, he, Harrington H, he was the, uh, draw, one of the two drama teachers and, you know, he was larger than life and, and he would announce these games larger than life. And, yeah, sure did. and I was trying to do the same thing. I wasn't, I was trying to keep things in line with how he did them. And, and I, uh, could, I, I could tell you actually from experience, I, I, my freshman year, I actually spotted for H um during those games just for you know to get numbers to them and stuff like that for mm -hmm. tackles and stuff like that and i'll tell you man it was it was surreal being up there with that man he was amazing so i know he was a big mentor to you mm -hmm. and so i could definitely imagine that you were definitely trying to keep that that in line and yeah i was trying that, that trying to channel it. yeah and so literally first game of the season I, I go out to call it, and the next day in the local newspaper, a writer that had covered the game commented on my announcing and saying that it was too over the top and, you know, that it, he didn't like it ultimately. And so the coach, uh, the main coach of the football team, uh, more or less fired me <laughs> because of the negative article written hmm. by by the gentleman from the newspaper. And so I decided to uh, write a skit for my local cable access television <laughs> show uh, in which we make a parody on the situation. Um, Cause I was frustrated. I thought it was ridiculous that I'm being fired because of uh, a guy writing a newspaper didn't like the way that I called the game, even though I would assume this guy had been to numerous games before where H called them and, in a very similar style. Maybe not. Maybe he was new. Either way, I'm the one suffering for it. So I decided to make light of the situation. And, uh, you know, I wrote a sketch where me and my friends, uh, we, we <laughs> made light of the situation. We made fun of the writer of the newspaper. We made fun of the football coach um, for firing me, which I didn't think was appropriate. Um, and needless to say, uh, we found out a couple days later that we were being put on hiatus because uh, some people went and complained uh, about what we did and they didn't appreciate it. And um, we never came back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, I, remember, uh, I remember doing that. I was, I was one of the guys with you on that. And I remember uh, everything. It was, it was, we were laughing and it was a good time. It was just, you know, it was being very jovial, which, you know, kind of a – uh, 
Saturday Live, Saturday Night Live kind of sketch of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently it was not received. It, it was, needless to say, it wasn't received well. Yeah. And, well, and I think what bothered me the most was that I had submitted this, the scene for approval to the executive producer as well as to the studio saying, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, and everybody, right. everybody was fine with it. Nobody yeah. said, hey, maybe we should tweak that because we weren't using anyone's real names. You know, we weren't doing anything that really should have been pushing it too far. Uh, but ultimately, I guess we pushed it too far. So uh, for me, you know... <laughs> we were high school students. <laughs> we always push things a little too far. Just a but, little. Yeah, but no, in this situation, no, I can... I remember, I remember when we talked about it um, prior to actually doing it. I remember, yeah, you had submitted it um, the day of, you know, uh, all the produ the producers were like, yeah, let's, you know, it's, it's cool. We, we, we're good to go. So yeah, to be all of a sudden, just like, you know, cut off at the knees right after that. I mean, it wasn't a, a, as big of a deal for me because I'd only done like, uh, two, maybe three episodes with you at the time. Uh, but I know it was a big deal for you because you'd been doing that for, a, a number of years in five or six capacities. years at that point. I, yeah. uh, I think I started working on that show in eighth grade, the summer between eighth and ninth grade. And, uh, I was working on it up until after high school. So yeah, it was, it, it was frustrating. It was, I, I thought we would come back. I thought we would take our, our slab on the wrist, be off the, sh be off the air for, you know, I think they told us 90 days and then we could reevaluate. And I thought we'd be back. And, uh, we, we never came back. Yeah. So, um, so that was, you know, outside of high school and outside of theater, that was another fun thing that I was heavily involved with. So as you mentioned, uh, after high school, you, uh, uh, went to Ohlone, but before Ohlone, or let's talk about something aside from school that mm -hmm. we were both involved with, which is working for Paramount's Great America. PGA. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> uh cause I, I can remember very fondly, uh, you know, uh, catching a ride with you in, in your mom's van and yeah. uh, uh, making our way. I, I remember when we blew out a tire and uh, I changed it because um, you didn't know how to change a tire. I never had to change a tire. So, you know. Yeah, but you figure it out, man. Like, you kind of just stood there. Oh. Well, so, you know. Uh, but so we, we both worked in entertainment at, at Paramount's Great America for, uh, I know I was there for 2.5 seasons or so. I was there um, for two seasons. I worked uh, two seasons. Okay. So first season, uh, were you, you were a theater tenant both seasons, right? Uh, I was a theater tenant and then lead theater tenant. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Lead theater tenant. Mm -hmm. um, so. Big I, deal. I, <laughs> so which theater did you work in primarily? Um, so my first year, I I worked at all the theaters. I, I worked in, uh, was it Splat City or was it? Mm -hmm. what was it they yeah. Called? yeah, so I worked um, in the Nickelodeon Theater over there. I worked um, at, I know I did IMAX a lot. I did, um, and a couple of the theaters weren't open but i pretty much really worked at all the theaters and actually which was really cool is i actually got to work some of the concerts too mm -hmm, which was mm -hmm. kind of dope so being able to be backstage and stuff like that was pretty cool yeah so my first year i was a theater attendant uh with you and uh, i was in the imax theater a ton uh, my second season went back and i was a uh, I was the IMAX projectionist. So I, I got to work up in the booth and I don't, I don't know if you remember, but I used to have my, uh, my little PlayStation with the TV mounted and yeah. up there playing wrestling. And, yeah. um, you know, it, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I can say that I was the, I was the last, <laughs> are you going to let me get this out? Yeah. I was the last person to run a film in that IMAX theater. Um, Why? Well, so, so here's what happened. Um, I was off the day before, and my, uh, my manager at the time neglected to tell me that on the day before, 
uh, some ball bearings started falling out of the machine and we probably needed to close the theater for some maintenance. Nobody communicated that. Nobody told me that. And so I went and opened the theater as normal. Uh, the TAs were there. So clearly nobody communicated to them. So we opened the theater and it was a 3D film. Now, for those of you that don't have never seen an IMAX film back when they were actually on <laughs> film, oh, oh, these boy. reels were literally six feet across. Um, and so for a 3D film, it was two reels. And uh, the time it would take for me to set up a film into the projector, because we had uh, three different movies that we were showing, so I would have to change those out as, as needed. It, it took anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes just to set up the film for showing. So now it's a 3D film, so it's twice as long. Um, and the, the 3D film we were showing was about Siegfried and Roy and their magic act. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I remember I'm, I'm doing my thing. I get the film set up. Uh, the projector's all ready to go. I go and sit down on my chair. We open up the, the theater. Uh, everybody gets loaded in. The opening announcement happens, and I start running the film. Everything's going fine. And uh, I'm playing on my PlayStation you know, playing my games, keeping an eye on the film, making sure everything's going well. There's a little button I have to hit to hit a, hit a wiper that, you know, tries to get the little fuzz off the screen. And um, all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> and I broke the IMAX theater. Um, so what was interesting was the fact that Paramount was current, was going to be going into negotiations with IMAX to re-up the contract for the theater just to negotiate, just to go to the table and have a conversation was $100,000. Nothing could come of it, but to have a conversation costs $100,000. So now they're going to have to pay $100,000 just to talk about renegotiating a contract, but they also are now going to have to replace both of the projectors because they broke. Um, ultimately, I wasn't fired. Um, because, no. cause after everything was fleshed out, it was not my <clears> fault <throat> that, that it happened. Uh, I was put back to being a TA. Um, I got to keep my pay, which was cool. Um, but, uh, I, I ended up doing that till the end of that second season and, uh, went back for the start of a third and realized I really didn't want to do it anymore. And, uh, for me in, 2003, I guess, I went to go work for Dave & Buster's. Um, so post high school for, for you and me, um, we didn't do a whole lot together. We, we both went to Ohlone, Um And I think we did hey, West Side suckered, Story. You guys suckered me into a dance class. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which I dropped. Uh, I yeah. didn't even finish. Uh, but we did do West Side Story together up at Ohlone. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh, that was kind of fun because I had done it the year prior in high school. It was the final mm -hmm. show that we did. And, uh, you know, you had already graduated, so you didn't get to do it. And so getting to do that together was kind of fun up at Ohlone, but I think yeah. that's the only show we did together at Ohlone. At Ohlone. Yes. That was the only show that we did. And the, the last show I think that you and I worked on in that time frame was Godspell at yeah. Sunnyvale Community Players. Yeah, I didn't believe so. And that that was a, a trip in and of itself, uh, because we you this was you you went to audition. I was hanging out with you, and so I was like, you were like, hey, would you come with me to this audition or whatever? And I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. I had no plans to audition, but ended up auditioning. <laughs> well, you know, it was you you you're black and they wanted to have a more robust cast and yeah. there also weren't a ton of people that auditioned and you know uh, you'll remember that we also brought in a, another friend uh, right. who, who didn't audition uh, but we we needed some people and uh, our friend angel fortunately uh, was available and he came and joined the cast as well and uh, but aside from the three of us, we didn't, I think this was like really our first time doing a show Outside where we didn't, and, yeah, we didn't, where we didn't anybody, know really. anyone. Yeah. And, and I think it was a lot of fun. I think we made <clears> a, <throat> a lot of friends or show friends because yeah. I, I don't know about you, but after the show I was over, I didn't. The only, I mean, there was one that I ran into like years later and we kind of reconnected, but that was about it. 
Yeah. And, and so, but I think, you know, for, for you and me, uh, unfortunately, you know, around that time frame, around 2003 is when we kind of went our separate ways. Yeah. Um, but, you know, touching back for a couple of moments on the Ohlone College Theater Festival, um, you know, as a college student now at Ohlone uh, and being a part of the theater program and, and being involved up there, it was expected that you would help with the theater festival. Yeah. And, and, and so I know for myself, uh, I think I did it for two years. And, um, you know, for me at that point, it was go be, uh, you know, a, a room, a room monitor. Yeah, room host. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I hated it because I never got to be in any of the rooms that I wanted to be in. Right. I kept getting stuck in like classical dramatic monologues, which, you know, are so painful um, for me. I mean, some yeah. people love them, right? But I, right. I did not. And right. so I think after my second year of doing it, I was like, I'm done. I, I'm going to have an excuse or whatever to not really be here. And I think that's when I started like, working my way out of Ohlone because, you know, going to work for Dave and Buster's required a lot more commitment. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, for me, when I look back on the Ohlone College Theater Festival post high school, I don't look back on it fondly where you had a very significantly <laughs> different uh, perspective. And unfortunately, I don't think we have enough time today to really get to that. Um, but I will tease that uh, the next time we do a history of us, that uh, we will have James share his story of uh, his post high school Ohlone College Theater Festival experience because, <laughs> uh, man, that guy that was, was hanging around time. for way too long. I hosted uh, that thing a long time. <laughs> I, I will tell you that I left Ohlone for about a decade, came back to be a judge. And James was still doing the same thing as when I left Ohlone. So um, <laughs> I was no longer a student, mind you. I was just coming back to host. Sure. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't want to jump into any more stories because I don't feel like we have enough time left in the show. Uh, no. So with that, um, you got any last closing thoughts before we wrap up here? Well, this was this was nice, I, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that I, that's the only reason I was laughing because I remember that 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 Great America story with that IMAX man. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's that's why I was laughing so hard because I remember that I remember that very fondly. I don't uh, I don't know if that building is still so there today. The but building, no. So I know the at least um, the couple years ago when I went back, the building the is building still there? is still there. <sighs> um, such the a waste of is, space, man. The building is still there, at least like this was a number of years ago. They built around said building. That's where the Gold Strike coaster is. Uh, but inside the building, there is nothing. I mean, the screen and everything is gone. They actually come in and basically go from top to bottom with a, uh, with a blade and just slice the screen. Um, Wow. And so, so it's basically unusable anymore. And so like, yeah, so that I know for sure, like the screen and stuff I believe is gone. Um, but yeah, the building, as far as I know, is still there. I broke the IMAX theater. <laughs> oh, Hey, real quick, just a uh, side note. Hey, do you remember when they shot uh, uh, Beverly Hills cop three there? Yes. Yeah. We went back there to do the, to watch the 3d glasses for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we found we found the uh, costumes from the characters in Beverly Hills Cop Three in that back room. Did you? Were you I there did for not that? know that. No. Yeah, yeah. That's we awesome. found them back there. We actually <laughs> we had we had came up with a plot to try and get them out of there, but we knew that there was no way because there's cameras all over that place. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun memories good. of PGA's Great America. Oh uh, yeah, days off. We even showed up there on days off sometimes. That was way incredible. too much. Why? Yeah. <laughs> all right well with that i'm gonna wrap us up if you yes, if you missed anything uh this uh go back re-listen to the podcast starting in just a few hours via anchor spotify amazon music iHeartRadio, uh apple podcast breaker google podcast or radio public uh also be on the lookout for the video later this weekend uh have that up by then so um you know, we do appreciate those of you that have tuned in live. We do appreciate those of you that are listening to us now. Uh, but please send us some comments. Those are yes, important things. Yes, please. Let us know what you're thinking, what you'd like to see us talk about. Uh, and, you know, again, if it's interesting to us, we'll talk about it. Absolutely. 
Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.